test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Bree Reynolds, and I'm with Flex Jobs. We're very excited to be hosting this webinar today. We're going to give everyone another couple minutes to sign in before we get started. That gives everyone a chance to get into the webinar, get a drink, settle in, get comfortable, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So at about two minutes past the hour, we will start. Thank you all for being here. And hello to everyone who's just signed in in the last minute or so. This is Bree Reynolds from FlexJobs, and we are waiting one more minute to give everyone a chance to get into the webinar, and then we'll go ahead and get started. It looks like we're just a couple minutes past the hour, so time to go ahead and start the webinar. Uh, hi, and welcome everyone again to today's webinar. Today we're going to be talking about four great companies, Williams Sonoma, Broadpath Healthcare Solutions, OutSchool, and InVision, and they're all hiring for flexible and remote jobs. Um, and so we're going to be hearing from representatives at each of those companies talking about the type of work that they're offering and what they look for when they're hiring remote and flexible workers. Very excited for that. Uh, my name is Bree Reynolds and I'm the Senior Career Specialist at FlexJobs. And FlexJobs is really pleased to be hosting this webinar. These employers have some great information to share and we're all excited for you to hear it. A little bit of housekeeping before we dive in. This is gonna be about a 60 minute webinar so we will be going to the top of the next hour. It ends with an audience Q&A, so if you have any questions, you can certainly ask those throughout the webinar and then we'll try to answer as many of those as we get to as we can get to at the end of the presentation. Um, keeping in mind that the questions that we will be able to answer are ones that are a little bit more general. So if you have a very specific question about your um, particular situation, that probably won't get asked. But if you have more general questions about hiring and what you need to know when you're applying to these companies, we will absolutely get to as many of those types of questions as we can. This webinar is also being recorded and you'll all receive a link to the recording tomorrow. So if you want to review the information that you've learned here today, or if you have to drop off the call early or uh, anything like that, you will have a link to the full recording and be able to uh, review all of that info and get what you need. Um, I also would uh, say for anybody who is able to stay to the top of the hour, it'll be a good thing to stay because at the end of the hour, we're going to be giving away a Williams Sonoma gift card to one lucky uh, registrant today. So it could be somebody participating on the call, um, but we also have it open to people who may be registered but aren't able to actually make the call and they're waiting for that recording. But we will be announcing it at the end of the webinar. So stay tuned for that kind of exciting little twist at the end. Um, if you are looking for where to ask a question uh, and you can't see it, you're going to want to look for your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, the GoToWebinar control panel is uh, sometimes appears on your screen just the way it is and you can see where the questions area is. Other times you have to look for a little orange arrow and if you click that arrow, the webinar control panel will appear and you'll see where you can ask questions and, and chat with folks. Uh, you'll also receive an email tomorrow, as I said, with a link to the recording of the webinar and a brief survey. It takes, I think it's maybe three questions. It takes not even 30 seconds to fill out, and we would very much appreciate if you can fill that out. It helps us make sure that these webinars are useful and make changes that we need to, take, to, uh, to make to make them more useful. Okay, the topics we're going to be covering today, just a quick introduction to flex jobs and to the um, panelists that we have on the call today. And then I'm going to talk very briefly about flexible job market trends, just so we're kind of all on the same page about 
what the flexible job market is and what it looks like. And then we're going to get to what you are all certainly here for the uh, here from hiring reps from William Sonoma, Broadpath Healthcare Solutions, OutSchool and Envision. And then I, the last 15 to 20 minutes or so, we're going to leave for audience Q&A. And then at the very end of the call, we will do that gift card winner announcement. So lots of good stuff to get through today. Just a preview of our employer panel. Uh, these are the four or five folks, I should say, four companies and five people that you'll be hearing from. And each of them is going to be talking about why their company values flexible and remote work and what they look for in hiring flexible workers and current jobs that they have available. So from William Sonoma, we'll be hearing from Josh, Josh Layton, who is the Care Center Recruiting Manager. At Broadpath Healthcare Solutions, we'll be hearing from Stacey Hodge, and who's the Director of Recruiting and HR, and Scott Robinson, who's the Recruiting Supervisor. At OutSchool, we'll be hearing from Nicholas Grandy, who's the co-founder of OutSchool. And at Envision, we'll be hearing from Kristen Walsh, who is the sales recruiter. So lots of great information to come from these folks, and we thank them very much for being here today. So a little bit about FlexJobs. We celebrated our 10th anniversary back in 2017. So we just turned 10, now we just turned 11 <laughs> this year. And we list pre-screened telecommuting, flexible schedule, full-time and part-time, and freelance jobs. So essentially any kind of job that takes you out of that traditional nine to five in-office setup and gives you more control over when, where, and how you are working every day. We've helped over 3 million job seekers since our founding back in 2007. And we've also created a database over the years of over 49,000 researched and vetted companies that offer flexible work options. And of course, you're gonna be hearing from four of those companies today. And there's a lot more research that you can do on the FlexJob site if you're interested in finding more companies that offer flexibility. And we are a membership site. And being a membership site essentially means that we are focused exclusively on job seekers. So unlike other job boards, we don't um, take money from employers to post their jobs. It is free to post jobs on FlexJobs, uh, but we do a rigorous screening process for every employer and every job that gets posted. And in order to operate that way, we are a subscription service for job seekers. So for anybody who's unfamiliar with that, I just wanted to point that out because it is a little bit different than other job search sites. But we believe that if you're looking for flexible and, and telecommuting types of jobs, that our site offers really great value in terms of making that easier, faster, and safer for you to find those types of jobs without ads, uh, too good to be too business opportunity, too good to be true, excuse me, business opportunities, commission only jobs, and all of that sort of clutter. Um, so what you get is just a really easy to navigate uh, jobs database with flexible jobs. And so that's who Flex Jobs is. Okay, so I wanted to go over the flexible job market. The first thing I wanted to start out with is the top career fields for flexible jobs. And you're gonna be hearing about jobs in a lot of these career fields today. Um, so we look at job posting data on flex jobs month over month and year over year to see where are the jobs actually being posted? Which career fields are they being offered for? And these 20 tend to be the top uh, year over year. We look at about 55 career fields altogether. So uh, this is, the top 20 out of those 55. And just as you're looking at this, um, you know, I'm hoping you'll get some ideas for either where your particular career lies and you'll say, oh, great, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in my particular career field. Or you might get some ideas for where you might be able to transition or make changes um, in your career. Maybe you've been interested in a certain type of field, but you weren't sure if it would offer the flexibility that you needed. Um, and so up here, that kind of gives you a hint as to whether it does or not. And for anybody who's looking at this list and saying, my career field is not listed here, <laughs> what do I do if I wanna do flexible work? That's not to worry at all. As I said, we get this list out of 55 career fields. So uh, there are definitely flexible job listings in many other career fields other than the 20 you see here. Uh, it just might take a little bit longer and a little bit more research to pinpoint exactly what you are looking for, but those jobs are definitely out there. I also wanted to touch on the most common remote job titles. So you'll see, again, a list of about 20 job titles here, but these are specifically for remote jobs. So the last list that we looked at was for all types of flexibility, uh, flexible scheduling, remote, freelance, and part-time. I wanted to show you remote job titles in particular because anytime we survey job seekers and ask them, what type of flexibility would you 
really like, the number one answer by far is remote work. And so I wanted to point out the most common remote job titles for anybody here who might feel that way, that they're really looking for remote work in particular. So again, you can see there's a lot of variety. There are a lot of different types of jobs that can be done remotely. And uh, this hopefully gives you some ideas as well, either for your current career field, you are confirming that you can do it remotely, or maybe some ideas for where you might be able to transition. And again, the same caveat goes with this slide. If you don't see something that is of interest to you on this list of 20 job titles, that certainly does not mean that you're out of luck and you won't be able to work remotely. There are thousands of different types of jobs that are done remotely, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. These are just where we see a lot of volume in terms of job listings. The last thing I wanted to touch on is keyword searching for flexible jobs. And this is something that we could also ask the panelists about. What types of keywords do they use when they're posting their flexible jobs online? Um, for, in order for you guys to be able to find them. Um, what we've found is that there are a lot of scams in the work from home and work at home job market in particular. And so we try to encourage people to avoid using the phrases work from home and work at home when they're searching. So this doesn't mean that every single job that is listed as a work from home or work at home job is going to be a scam. It just means that there are a lot of scams you'll have to sift through <laughs> to find those legitimate work from home and work at home jobs. So there are definitely some safer keywords to use, um, things like telecommuting, virtual, and remote. We tend to see those the most often from companies um, using those keywords to post their legitimate opportunities. And, um, and then I also listed some different uh, keywords that you can use if you're looking for freelance work or flexible schedules or flexible hours in the following columns. So again, just it, it's an easy thing to remember if you can avoid using the phrases work from home and work at home when you're searching for jobs online and try to stick more to telecommute, virtual, remote, and some of the other words that we see listed here. Uh, scammers essentially know that it's really easy to describe this way of work as, I want to work from home, or I want to work at home, and that's what people are going to search for. And so they've taken that ease and turned it into the way that they attract people to their jobs. So they're using those phrases, knowing that people search for them quite a lot, and um, they're luring them into different types of work from home scams that are a real nuisance and pain and frustration for people who get into them. So best to avoid them if we can. All right, and that is my spiel for the top of the webinar. Now I'm really excited to get into our employer panel. As I said, each of these folks is going to be discussing their company, um, why they value flexible and remote work and what they look for in hiring flexible workers. And of course, current job openings so that you guys can know what is out there and what they'll be hiring for. So the first person I want to turn it over to is Josh Layton, who is the Care Center Recruiting Manager at Williams-Sonoma. Josh, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, good morning, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really impressed right now, I gotta say 544 attendees, good Lord. Um, you guys <laughs> did a heck of a job today, and I really do appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to everybody this morning. So, um, Remote work has kind of been in our blood for the last couple of years and it's grown tremendously and we, we plan on it growing even more. This year we're targeting 80% of our customer service workforce to actually be working from home. Or I guess if we want to rephrase that, uh, virtual or telecommute. <laughs> so I just learned a lesson just about five minutes ago. So anyhow, um, currently right now we're hiring a thousand remote customer service positions. And that's, um, in different pockets of the country right now. As you can see here in Vegas, Oklahoma City, uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, the Atlanta, Georgia area, Bakersfield, California, and Columbus, Ohio. There's certain areas where we have full access to states, and then there's others based on um, essentially tax credits where we're a little bit limited to specific counties. So um, to, to give you a little bit of an idea of what this position really entails, is um, it's inbound customer service, it's a phone position, um, it really making a friend on the phone. So our, our clients um, give us a call for all kinds of random inquiries, whether it's, you know, hey, where's my order? There could be a special order um, situation where they're just calling and inquiring about, um, all the way down to uh, specific shipment dates, drop ships, and then we're now even rolling out um, a, a, new, a new benefit where our customers can actually pick up their goods from the stores and even return from the stores. So we're, we're, we're trying to provide as much options 
uh, for our, our customers as we possibly can to kind of change that the way of, of uh, how the retail business is working out. So um, $12 an hour, you guys do get full benefits with that 401k. Um, there's a new benefit too as well rolling out to any future mommies. Um, as of the 1st of May, we're actually going to be providing six weeks worth of paid uh, maternity leave. Um, the only qualifier is you would have to be working for us for 12 months consistently. Um, we do offer a discount too that we give for all of our brands, not just Williams-Sonoma, but Pottery Barn. Lucrative is it's a point-based system where you can actually exchange your points um, that you get from supervisors uh, for, for gifts. So, and some of those gifts can be anything from, let's say, uh, a set of earbud headphones all the way up to European paid vacations, depending on how much you're banking your points and how well you're doing in accordance to, um, you know, the day-to-day. -day. Coming soon, here's another, uh, here's another exciting thing. And I know we get questions from uh, people all around the country is when are you going to come to our area or is there an option for us to possibly move from um, what you have available to, to, a, to any other area right now? Florida, North Carolina, Utah, Arizona, Kentucky, and Virginia are going to be targets we plan on opening 100% virtual locations this year. So let's say you're living in Vegas and you decide, you know what, we're going to move out to, I don't know, Orlando, Florida. We are going to have that option by the end of this year. So you can essentially take your position with you. Um, really what I look for um, as far as is qualifiers for my candidates, I really look for great personalities uh, that have a passion to serve. And I, and I understand that customer service really comes from all backgrounds and all walks of life. So, so, so one of our pre-qualifiers is one year of customer service background. That could be anywhere from a, a, a phone position to, to a retail position to um, even a receptionist. Um, anybody that is serving an internal or an external customer that has a great attitude, um, I, I definitely want to talk to to those individuals. Um, now that we are 100% work from home, including our training program, um, we, we do need individuals as well that have the capability of essentially troubleshooting their own computers. So somebody that's a little more tech savvy, um, because you might have those scenarios where the audio goes out on your computer or let's say the screen goes out, or even during training, um, they'll ask you to, to navigate through through different systems. So we're looking for somebody that, that has the, the capability of being able to work fairly confidently on a computer. Um, as far as the requirements to work from home, um, you would need high-speed internet, and depending on in the area, it would be five megabytes up and down. Um, cell phone or a landline with fairly um, or I'm sorry, cell phone or landline, and then also just obviously a laptop computer or a desktop computer that has fairly updated software. So, um, so yeah, other than that, I mean, that's, gosh, guys, I can only tell you, I've been with the company for two years, and hands down, it's been one of the best opportunities I've ever had. Um, even though we are a multi-billion dollar company, it really feels like a family atmosphere here. I mean, if you had the chance to to tour some of our care centers. We have very happy people that work here. And, um, and really a, a lot of that comes from, um, you know, the top down from, from our, our senior vice president. His name is Craig Barnes. Uh, he's been with the company for going, going on now 18 years. He's one of the greatest guys you'll meet. And, and, and if you ever have the chance to meet him or any of our other leaders, or if you ever do come on board, uh, you'll see that we breathe this here. Um, people first is really our mantra, and, and it couldn't be more evident if you have the chance to really kind of tour through our locations. Um, we recently brought on board, which is really exciting to an engagement manager um, that's specifically working with a lot of our work from home associates. Uh, she's amazing. She's been with the company for, for several years as well. She actually helped um, establish our Columbus Virtual Center, so she knows it very well. She understands what y'all are looking for in a position and um, just the support and the growth that we have going on right now, it, it's pretty incredible. So I'd say uh, if anybody's interested in possibly coming on board, um, I'd love to, to have a discussion with you. As you can see down here, 
uh, I did place my, my careers portal. Um, that careers portal too is also going to give you different opportunities um, for those that may be looking for, let's say, you know, part-time positions maybe at a retail store, maybe not necessarily a remote position. But uh, we're, we're growing the remote work, like I said, tremendously here um, over the next several months, a, a thousand remote service positions. I mean, that's kind of unheard of for us right now. So, and, and for anybody that has questions about growth opportunities, even, even uh, from the home, uh, I'd love to go over kind of what that looks like and, um, you know, how to, uh, how to attain some of those leadership and also um, unique type positions that we do offer to our work from home associates. So other than that, I don't know what else to say other than I, I got to say really thanks again for everybody attending this. Really appreciate everything that Flex Jobs does for us. Uh, they're hands down one of our better partners. They're very credible. They're, they're just, they're amazing, amazing people to work with. And I can't say, um, you know, I, I can't say anything better about these guys. So you're, you're all in really great hands and uh, really do appreciate it. Wow, well, thank you very much, Josh, and uh, same to you, for sure. I mean, this, this sounds like a fantastic opportunity, and just the depth of information that you've shared over the last few minutes is pretty awesome. That's a lot of really good info just about uh, where you're hiring, why you're hiring, how you're hiring, all that kind of stuff is exactly what everybody wants to hear. So thank you very much. Great. Thanks again. All right. And so next up on our panel, we have a duo. We have Stacey Hodge and Scott Robinson from Broadpath Healthcare Solutions. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you so much. This is Stacey Hodge. I'm really excited to be here today and have the opportunity to talk a little bit about Broadpath and who we are and what we do. Um, I have been with Broadpath for about six months now. I am the Director of Recruiting and HR. We are headquartered here in Tucson, Arizona, where it's a pleasant 70 degrees right now. We were founded in 2008, and we provide on-demand customer support to health plans. 97% of our workforce is remote. We're working in 48 states across our nation, and we are very proud and pleased to be a top 20 employer with FlexJobs. We're a team of innovators, fast-paced problem solvers, and we provide flexible and remote workers that support the healthcare industry in healthcare payers and providers across the board. We're passionate about working remote, and one of the great things that makes us a market differentiator is we provide all of the equipment and training needed for success. We match experience, attitude, and skills to a wide range of positions in the healthcare space. And to talk a little bit more about that, I'd like to introduce you to Scott Robinson, who is our recruiting supervisor, and he can share more about the positions that we hire for. Scott? Thank you so much, Stacey. Hi, everybody. Scott Robinson, recruiting supervisor at Broadpath. Um, I'm approaching my eighth year with the company, so clearly I'm a fan of the work we do to help people in the healthcare space. Um, if you could jump to the next slide, please. A little bit about uh, the ability to discover your potential at Broadpath. We hire a variety of full-time, part-time, and part-time flexible positions within the healthcare space. In the busy remaining hiring season for the rest of this year, really excited about it. Typically, we ramp up our hiring efforts at the end of summertime and through fall. However, we are always hiring uh, immediate and future opportunities as well. They're advertised on our website. I'll talk about that on the next slide be sure to check out our job board page regularly. Uh, successful broad pathers will possess work at home experience, solid technical skills, healthcare knowledge, and definitely a positive attitude. We love to help people every day. What makes broad path different is that we provide all the necessary equipment for you to be successful in your role. Uh, you will simply need to provide high speed broadband internet and a professional closed door workspace will drop ship all the equipment needed to you directly. Uh, we're always networking and pipelining talent. We connect with candidates every single day. Uh, our process is extremely simple. You'll need to complete an internet speed test, a computer skills assessment. In addition to those two items, a recruiter on our team will interview, speak with you, network with you, and match you to a project that best matches your skill set, availability, and interest. We're really aiming to set you up for success in the healthcare space. Uh, as you can see on the slide, we hire customer care, claims, sales, cl 
clinical support, pharmacy, and administrative positions. All of our focuses, excuse me, all of our positions focus on helping members and providers in the Medicaid, Medicare, and commercial health spaces. I'd like to highlight our cornerstone position right now, which is quality customer service. We support Medicare, Medicaid, and commercial health plans. Um, in addition to customer care, we are regularly hiring for a variety of positions within the claims and sales sectors uh, yearly. Our sales positions do require an active health producer license in your home state, but regardless of your position at Broadpath, we're going to help somebody every single day. That is a guarantee. Uh, jumping over to our final slide. We really encourage you to connect and engage with us on all of our social media platforms. Like us on Facebook, join us, join our group on LinkedIn. We post our positions on this page as well. Uh, check out our four star glass door rating to learn more about our, com our company and our culture. Um, and then lastly, the hyperlink on the website, broad-app.com. Please view our openings, um, apply today. We'd love to chat with you. Uh, and that's it. Appreciate everybody taking their time to come learn about Broadcast and our opportunities. Hope to talk to you soon. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Stacey and Scott. That was really comprehensive. And in uh, just a few minutes, I love how things are going so far. Very good. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, we definitely have some questions coming in for you guys and for Josh at Williams Sonoma. So we will be tallying those up and asking those at the end of the, uh, the panel. So thank you guys very much. All right, our next panelist is Nicholas Grandy, who is the co-founder at OutSchool. Nicholas, thank you very much for being here. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Sorry, it took me a moment to unmute myself there. Um, no problem. Excited to, yeah, uh, excited to be here. Um, I lead operations at OutSchool, and we are looking for lots of online teachers. Um, and I'm happy to say that a lot of teachers have already found us through Flex Jobs, and we appreciate um, that Flex Jobs gets it in a way that many traditional job sites don't, don't get it um, because we are entirely uh, virtual and online. Uh, at OutSchool, our motto is where kids love learning. And we believe the best learning experiences happen when teachers and learners want to be there in class together. Uh, we bring together independent teachers and learners from around the U.S. and around the world. We're entirely online, and uh, there's currently around 500 teachers active on OutSchool and thousands of families taking classes. Um, if you are on your computer right now, you can check us out at outschool.com to get more of a sense of what, uh, what the service looks like. So OutSchool is not a traditional school. Uh, it's more like a marketplace for live online classes for K through 12 learners covering all subjects. And when I say live online class, um, it's sort of a, a new thing. Think group video chat, you know, Skype video like you might do with your relatives. Um, most classes look like a teacher and five kids um, participating, talking live together. Uh, there's a huge range of classes in OutSchool currently, over 4,000. So much is possible, and actually, we're always surprised at the the kinds of classes that that actually work online that we never thought might work online. Um, so you'll things like, you'll see things like creative writing, um, traditional math classes, study skills, life skills, uh, really creative and unique classes like uh, genetics with Harry Potter, um, classes like juggling, even cooking, uh, classes for young kids like phonics and uh, all the way up to classes for older students, like how to find an allergy-friendly college. So it's really a huge range there. Um, and we find that the, the live online format actually creates a really rich, compelling, and personal learning experience. Uh, for parents and families who use OutSchool, it's more like a menu um, where they can pick and choose exactly what classes they want and that are appropriate for them. So as a, as a teacher on OutSchool, you are in full control of what you offer. Teachers choose the curriculum, they choose the schedule of classes they offer, and they set the pricing. OutSchool handles the logistics. 
So our goal is to uh, handle everything else so that teachers can focus on the teaching. So we, we provide a way to publish classes, communication tools, a payment system, and standard tools for running classes on OutSchool. Uh, as far as who can teach and who our teachers are, we don't actually require a traditional teaching certificate. Uh, we do think that a lot of people have uh, something to offer young learners, um, but we do prefer teaching experience and we do require a passion for expertise that you want to share with learners. Uh, so we do screen all teachers and all classes. Uh, like the other companies here, we are looking for people who are more tech savvy um, and who do have access to a reliable internet connection. Um, Many of our teachers are former professional teachers uh, who are no longer teaching full-time, but want to keep doing it in some part-time and flexible way. Uh, and then many others are, are just other adults um, who are professionals of some kind, artists, writers, um, whatever, who, who want to share a skill or a passion with students. Um, most of our teachers are using out of school for part-time income, uh, not full-time income. Uh, earnings vary based on the price of the class you offer and the number of students who enroll with you. Uh, in general, we see teachers earning uh, around 20 to $40 an hour, uh, and it does vary. Um, and you can learn more and sign up at outschool.com slash teach. We are a young company and growing rapidly and looking for lots more teachers. Uh, and many of our teachers find it incredibly satisfying to, uh, to teach on our school uh, and, and uh, reach young um, learners. So uh, happy to answer any questions that come up. Thanks for having me. All right, awesome, Nicholas, thank you very much. Yeah, this, it sounds just like a fantastic opportunity and um, so nice for teachers to be able to do this sort of thing in a new and creative way, very cool. All right, and last but certainly not least, we have our final panelist here today, Kristen Walsh, who is a sales recruiter at Envision. Kristen, thanks a lot for being here. Take it away. Thank you so much for having us. We're really excited to be involved in this panel, and I'm happy to talk a little bit more about who we are um, and what we do here. So um, I won't read through this slide for you. You guys can all check it out, but I'll tell you a little bit about um, who Envision is and um, how I landed here and what we're looking for in terms of um, adding more really awesome talent. So I landed here at Envision um, about eight months ago. So um, I am an old timer here uh, at Envision. We've grown really, really quickly um, and, and quite truthfully in all areas um, of our business. So we've seen tremendous growth, not only for uh, my teams, the, the CFT teams or customer facing teams, but um, we've also grown exponentially in our design teams, engineering, marketing, um, our recruitment team has gotten quite large as well. Um, sales, user, user enablement, uh, and our product teams. Um, we've recently gone from a single design platform um, product offering to multi-product offering, which was really exciting for us. Um, our leadership here has worked pretty tirelessly um, at getting our, our products shipped and out the door. Um, and it was not a single, you know, a single person's um, uh, effort here for, for certain, but we really um, focus our product offerings um, primarily to the design community. Um, most of our folks here on the design uh, of our product platform um, will, will be users of Envision. Um, and how we look at the, the, the way that we sell our products, um, and I'll be a little sales centric here just because it's my gang, but um, how we look at selling our product is, uh, you know, how different uh, organizations can build really significant user experiences. So at the end of the day, uh, we all spend, I think the, the last latest and greatest that we saw was something between eight and 10 hours a day on a screen of some sort. Um, if you're using mobile applications with than that eight to 10 hours, you're probably using a product that um, some designers have worked pretty tirelessly on creating specifically for you um, to have a really great experience and a positive impact. So Envision is a platform that enables those design designers to be successful in doing that. Um, Envision offers essentially everything you need to be successful in working from home. We have 600 um, plus employees now, which is really exciting for us. Um, and all 600 of those folks are decentralized. So we all work wherever we would like to work. Um, we hire those folks for any of those roles that I just kind of high level ran through um, anywhere. We're of the mindset that 
um, living to work and working to live are not the same thing and you should be able to design your life um, how you would like to design it and be successful in a career in doing so. So um, we can hire anywhere in the US, we're not restricted. Uh, we do provide you with everything you need for your home office setup um, directly from Envision. And then there's also a home office reimbursement that we do provide to all new employees as well so that you can add um, I don't know, any cool stuff that you want for your office to be your own office. Um, we spend a lot of time building a really exciting and, and awesome culture, you know, appreciating that um, not being in an office can sometimes be, be tricky. Um, and so how do you scale a company to be successful and have really great uh, products and, you know, really engaging relationships with your end user and customer? Um, so we, we put a lot of time and effort into making sure that that has scaled and been, um, been something that we are really passionate about. We want every employee, um, whether you're in an office or not, to feel like you are part of something bigger. Um, we do have WeWork space in our major uh, city hubs. So Boston, uh, New York, Austin, Denver, San Diego, Los Angeles. Uh, I'm sure there's some that I'm missing. Um, and mostly you'll see our customer facing teams utilizing that space uh, to meet with different customers or to do some team building or if they're working on a particular um, project together. So we do get together in person. We um, every year do something we call IRL, so in real life. Um, and all of the um, employees globally get together and see each other three-dimensionally, which is really cool. Um, Try to think if I'm missing anything. We do have, uh, where we don't have any physical office space, we offer a lot of really cool and creative perks for our, our employees. Um, so we have what's called an Envision, uh, Envision Cafe card um, that we send out to all of our new employees and on a monthly basis, it's reloaded, it's a Visa card, it's reloaded with $100 um, that you can use to go get coffee or breakfast, um, since we don't have an office for you to do that in. Um, you know, other cool things, you know, your gym reimbursements, and, and uh, we have an, an awesome internal recognition program here where you can, um, on a monthly basis, Envision refreshes your budget, where you can recognize teammates that you're maybe, you know, are working really closely with, um, or being successful in, in different projects together, and you can recognize each other um, with a bonus reward that you can redeem for a whole bunch of really cool stuff. I tend to defer to Amazon gift cards because, um, that's where I spend a lot of time. Um, but uh, that said, um, I will flip it back over um, to you, Bree, um, and happy to answer any questions or do a deeper dive anywhere that um, any of you wonderful attendees would like. Awesome, Kristen, thank you very much. That was super informative. And again, just it's so much information packed into just a few minutes. I really appreciate everybody on the panel today um, providing so much awesome info in such little time because that means we can open it up for audience Q&A even earlier. So that's great. We'll get in a couple extra questions here. Um, so let me just flip over to the Q&A slide here, and we will go ahead and get started. So we've got the information on each of the, uh, the companies here and the sites where you can apply for jobs, depending on if you're applying through Flex Jobs or you want to go directly to their site. Um, and yeah, let's open it up to questions. So the first question, I think one of the things that's probably surprised a lot of people on the call, uh, judging by the number of questions we've gotten about this topic, is that oftentimes remote jobs require you to be in a certain location. So I wanted to review that with each of you. Um, talk to me a little bit, or talk to the audience a little bit about where you're hiring and why that is the case, why your remote jobs um, require someone to be in a particular location. Because I think it's so common, I think it's about 95% of remote jobs have a location requirement of some kind, but it's also very surprising because when job seekers are looking for that, they you know, tend to think remote work can be done from just about anywhere, which is not actually the case. So um, yeah, so let's start with Josh, and I'm actually gonna go back to your slides because I know some of you have listed the actual location so we can get that specific info up there in front of everybody. But Josh, will you just review again where um, you are hiring and maybe a little bit about why it is that you have those location requirements? Sure. So as you can see here, currently we're in, we're in Vegas, OKC. The, um, it's actually the colony, uh, Texas, right outside of Dallas, um, Atlanta, Bakersfield, Columbus. The reason being is um, <clears throat> we, we have hub locations at most of these locations. So Vegas, we have an actual care center here, um, OKC. Dallas and also Bakersfield, all four locations actually have care centers located um, in that area. Uh, Columbus and the, the Georgia area, we have what we call DC distribution centers. And the reason being that we, we currently are hiring in those areas is in case anybody needs to come in for I-9 documents, uh, compliance paperwork, any of those sort of things, 
they're within driving distance to one of our DCs or hub locations. So um, we're in the process right now of, of partnering up with basically a remote service for our I-9s that should allow us to, to essentially go out to these other locations, like, like I mentioned, Florida, North Carolina, the others. So um, really most of it is just due to driving distance um, to any of our locations if we needed somebody to actually come in here. All right, perfect. Great. That, and that list Thank you'll you. see that coming and that com that coming soon list, that will continue to grow. So um that's really the hot button for us right now is we just need to get the licensure um in these locations too as well. So we, we have to actually have um essentially a care center license located in all these areas. And so basically our workforce management and our uh, operations teams uh, including myself, is really kind of scoping out, you know, different territories of the country and where we should start growing the business based on, um, you know, population, unemployment, all those other factors. And so you you will see that coming soon list grow exponentially here over the next couple of years. Great. I think that's music to people's ears. <laughs> and also a really good explanation. There were a number of, of things that you mentioned that are so common for remote jobs, you know, being close uh, driving distance wise for paperwork or meetings, also having sure. to be actually set up to hire folks in a certain location, get certified in that area. So um, yeah, so those are all really good reasons and very common for job seekers out there to note um, for a lot of the remote jobs that they might be looking at. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, no and let's go over to uh, Stacy and Scott at Broadpath Healthcare. How about you folks? Um, what are, are your location restrictions, if any, and what's behind those uh, restrictions? Nope, do we have Stacy or Scott on the line? Hi, it's Stacy. I have to figure out where that mute button is every now and then. <laughs> um, it's always moving. I apologize I for that. Yeah, <laughs> um, we hire across the entire U.S. and so we don't really have any restrictions. We do um, utilize a service that helps us uh, with our I-9 and home office inspections. So um, we don't really see any limitations to where our teams can be located because we like to cast a broad net to capture um, the best fit talent for our healthcare industry clients. Scott, do you wanna add anything? Yeah, absolutely. Great start, Stacey. Um, as Stacey mentioned, we're spread across uh, the nation in 48 states. 97% of our workforce is remote. Uh, really, all that we require is a dedicated home office space or a dedicated workspace at that um, with a hardwired internet connection. Uh, majority of our positions interact with protected health information, PHI. So we need a closed door, dedicated workspace. Uh, you may be interacting with a member helping them with sensitive information. So those are really our sticking points. Closed door professional workspace and a hardware internet connection. Great points. All right, yeah, that is great to know, especially depending on where people are located and what sort of um, high-speed internet is available and all that sort of stuff. Thank you very much, both of you. And over to Nicholas at OutSchool. Uh, where are you hiring? Are there certain locations? Are there no restrictions? Uh, what does your hiring look like as far as locations go? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we are hiring across the whole US uh, and also uh, three other countries, Canada, uh, Australia, and New Zealand. Um, and as far as, um, you know, everyone can work from home. Uh, and, and our concern uh, is just making sure that people have a a good environment to set up to, to be successful teaching, so uh, access to a good internet connection um, and a professional uh, workspace, you know, setting up a home office or sort of a home classroom um, so they can uh, uh, offer professional uh, classes online. That's it. All right, easy peasy. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. And last but not least, and I won't say that every time I say your name, Kristen, but <laughs> Kristen over at Envision, uh, what about you folks as far as location and what you're looking for? Yeah, so we actually, with the exception of sales, we are relatively open um, in terms of location. Um, sales being the caveat, uh, and, and maybe some of our other customer facing um, groups here being the caveat for a, a couple of reasons, um, and we're not even, truthfully, we're not even that specific about it, but we are broken down into um, three regions, and it would be East Coast, Central, and West Coast. 
Um, primarily that surfaced from initially, I think, you know, being able to be in front of customers more effectively um, so that you're not traveling. You know, it's nice to be able to work remotely, but then if you're traveling 90% of your time, um, it, it sort of is then what's the point of working remotely? So what we ended up um, doing just as we were kind of getting bigger and scaling up um, and we were able to add a bunch of folks, um, we started to get a little sensitive. Um, to people's locations just so that they do have that work-life balance that's really important and can get in front of customers but also be you know traveling um, if that's their passion or home with their families or, or whatever the case may be so while the the regions aren't super specific we do try to keep that in mind mostly just for sales um, I, I think you'll start to see it a little bit more as we get bigger and bigger uh, kind of being more sensitive to um, location based but I don't think you'll ever see it for us anyways at this point, um, become state specific. So mostly just um, East Coast, Central and West Coast. All right, great. Thank you very much, Kristen. Um, another question that we have is about uh, the positions that you're all offering, whether they are part-time or full-time. And if they are part-time, what sorts of hours are you each looking for? Because I know part-time can be anything from you know, five or 10 hours a week all the way up to like 30, 35 hours a week. So um, if you could each just talk a little bit about the schedule that you're looking for people to have. Also, if there are certain scheduling requirements, like you're looking for people at night and on the weekends versus in the middle of the day, that kind of stuff, um, that would all be very helpful. So I'm gonna go back to Josh for this one. Josh at Williams-Sonoma. All right, so currently, I mean, we're not offering part-time. We do offer part-time uh, throughout the years, really kind of depending on the needs. But right now, we're offering full-time. So, and that's gonna range anywhere between 30 to 50 hours a week. Um, like I had mentioned previously, I mean, we do have schedules available for the mornings and the evenings. So really depending on what the needs are of, of our candidates and, and, and demands. Um, we, we try to cater to that to the best of our ability. And we have a variety of different days off too as well. So whether it's the weekends or you need a couple days off during the midweeks, um, we have a, a, a fairly large variety of full-time schedules available. Um, nothing is overnight or, um, yeah, I mean, really there, there isn't any overnight shifts right now. Our, our business operations essentially from um, 5 a.m. in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. So. But as of right now, um, the, the, the part-time work, uh, we don't have any currently right now. It's just the full-time opportunities. All right, perfect. That's easy enough. Thank you, Josh. And over to Stacy and Scott at Broadpath Healthcare. What are your schedules like? Are you looking for part-time or full-time? And are there any set hours or, uh, yeah, anything you can tell us about that stuff? Sure. Um, we hire full-time, part-time, and part-time flex. And um, it really depends on the client engagement or the scope of work as to the hours. Typically, the majority of our hours of operations are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and we try to accommodate a variety of different schedules and preferences based off of um, the client requirements as well as our associates' needs to achieve that perfect flexible work-life balance. All right, great. Thank you very much, Stacey. And over to Nicholas at OutSchool. Nicholas, how about you folks in terms of part-time, full-time, and the, the number of hours and all that good stuff? Yeah, I think that we're, we're sort of at the extreme end of, of flexibility um, because teachers uh, really get to choose exactly what, um, what kind of classes they're teaching and also how much they want to teach. So we really see a, a full range of teachers who are offering uh, just you know a, a few classes here and there um you know almost you know just just to make a little uh, part-time money um and for the satisfaction of teachers of teaching um all the way up to people who are who are teaching uh pretty much full-time on out school uh you know sort of uh 30 to 40 hours a, a week um so it's that full range and it's really at the teacher's discretion um and the other cool thing is that because uh it is a global community, there is the potential to, um, to teach really at, at times of your choosing. So uh, some teachers are, are teaching you know, conventional uh, hours during the um, school day, um, but we also have students in Australia, say, um, and in Asia, so, so teachers are able to teach early morning or, or late night, really depending on their uh, preferences. So it really is quite flexible. 
Yes, it definitely sounds like it. Thank you. And Kristen at Envision, how about you folks in terms of schedule, uh, part-time, full-time, and uh, what you're offering? Yeah, so we, um, we're we mostly full-time. Um, we, because of the, the structure of our organization, um, we hire uh, full-time employees directly through um, Envision, and I haven't really seen much come up in the way of, of part-time. However, um, we all do work augmented in the US. Um, we work augmented hours so that we're all online at the same time um, because of the structure of our organization. So on the um, West Coast, they work seven to three um, every day, and then on the East Coast, we're 10 to six. Um, and then on Fridays, we all work reduced hours. Our workday ends at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So I think it works out to be um, roughly like 37-ish hours online um, time per week. But I would also tell you that um, because of our, our the way we're built here, um, you know, you're, you're able to sort of manage your schedule yourself. So um, depending on, you know, things that you may need to be doing in a particular day or if, you know, there are certain days a week where um, you have things that are pre-planned, um, as long as you are, because of the way our technology is set up, as long as you're available, um, you're able to be pretty flexible with your own schedule um, as needed. So, um, so yeah, so I mean, we, we try to do as much as we can to maintain that um, expectation for everybody as they join us. All right, great. Thank you very much. It's so interesting always to hear from each company about how they handle these sorts of things, because every company is a little bit different in terms of their hours, their schedules, all of that stuff. So thank you all very much for being so open and willing to share this great kind of insider information. We definitely appreciate it. Um, another thing that people are asking about, a number of people have asked about, it has to do with um, the application process and whether remote work experience is a plus. So for people who've worked remotely before, um, either occasionally or, uh, you know, a full-time kind of always working from home um, situation, is that something that you look for? Do you prefer people to mention that when they're applying in their resume or their cover letter? Um, and is there anything else like that that really makes somebody stand out to you other than obviously being qualified to do the actual job? Um, if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, remote work experience, if that's good, if they should point that out, and also any other... Uh, key things you, that really stand out to you and make you say, yes, we would like to talk to that person. <laughs> um, let's see, let's go to Josh at Williams Sonoma. We'll go back around the circle. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I would say yes, 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 very much. Um, yeah, we definitely want to, um, to have that exposed in the resume or the application that uh, you, you have had remote experience just because naturally, um, I, I talk to people on a daily basis that has never worked from home, and the idea of working from home sometimes sounds amazing until for some they do it. And, um, you know, we've had some experience, too, where people said, oh, gosh, this is so exciting, this is so fun, and this is where kind of the um, the requirements, being able to troubleshoot your own, you know, computer, or if you have any type of systematic issues, you should be able to kind of navigate through these things. Um, that tends to be the hurdle, and some people don't think about that. So, so typically, if somebody has had that remote experience in the past, they've probably gone through scenarios like that, where all of a sudden their computer turns off, or their uh, again the screen turns off, or audio goes out. All of a sudden. You don't have IT or you don't have somebody readily available right over to come over and basically take care of this. So that that's a huge plus to have that um, located someplace in the application. Typically, where I like to see it is um, uh, when you're describing your position, if it's you know customer service or again if it was let's say an analytical position or something. Um, you know, have it kind of highlighted remote within the the description of what you did previously. Uh, that's the, usually how I kind of describe that to a lot of the uh, the individuals that ask that out here locally in the Vegas area. And, and I say, yeah, it's it's imperative if anything because that that type of individual is going to be a massive asset because they already know what to expect. Awesome, thank you, Josh. And yeah, and for anybody who doesn't necessarily have previous experience, really thinking about what it's like reading up on people online who talk about working remotely and what it's like for them and the challenges and the skills that you really need um, and really having a good firm understanding of what you're getting yourself into is, uh, is a really good thing to do because as Josh said, some people start working from home and realize, huh, this is not what I thought it would be. And uh, it does have lots of benefits, but also comes with its own challenges and you need to be prepared for those. 
All right, Josh, thank you very much. And over to Stacy and Scott at Broadpath Healthcare. How about you folks and looking for previous remote work experience and if there's sure. anything else that would potentially make a job seeker stand out? Sure, thank you so much. I think I'd like to build on what Josh had outlined. Um, I think work at home is very attractive to a lot of job seekers out there today. Um, and it's certainly not for everyone. While it is a preference to be able to have a work at home experience, what's more important is the ability for a candidate to express through their resume and through their interview skills, the transferable skills that resonate as to what a quality customer service person um, is. That technical literacy, the ability to type and talk at the same time, being you know, a one call resolution, person who is really dedicated to pleasing others because helping people is what we do every day and it's not for everyone. Having prior call center experience is always a, a plus and we definitely give preference to people who have worked in the Medicare, Medicaid or commercial health plan field previously. Um, that's not to say that we won't um, consider candidates who have transferable skills that um, might better um, transition into a work from home opportunity. Um, so we're always looking to network and see what types of talent are out there. But building on what Josh had said, I think, you know, it's not a position that is for anyone. It is a phone based um, um, role where you're working with customers and taking phone calls all day long and you have to be able to be self-reliant. You need to be organized, be able to manage your time. Um, because we do work with, um, you know, personal health information, having some level of privacy is really important. You can't be working in a common area. I'd love to say I just put my sweats on and sit in my Barca lounger, but that's not the case. So, you know, having a dedicated workspace is really important to um, a candidate's success. Um, I'll toss it over to Scott to see if there's anything I may have missed in that, but I think that, um, you know, those are the, the top qualities that we look for. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Great talking points. The only thing I tack on is really for potential candidates and team members of Broadpath, get in sync with your resume. Um, make sure you're describing the companies you've worked for, your job title, your responsibilities, and your accomplishments. Um, being in sync with the resume is key when you're entering a hiring interview, understanding and being able to speak confidently in detail to your role and your duties. Um, and add to that. Thanks. Great point. All right, yes, great points from you both. Thank you very much. Um, and then over to Nicholas at OutSchool in terms of um, if you look for previous remote work experience and if there's anything else that could set somebody apart when they're applying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think not uh, remote uh, work experience in particular, but um, uh, particularly experience uh, learning or teaching um, online is a plus. Um, as well as generally being uh, tech savvy, um, because in this situation, uh, you know, it's not it's not just helping one other person; it's uh, helping to facilitate a class of students, um, and so that does require the teacher to have a, uh, a higher level of tech savvy to help make sure that uh, that everything's running smoothly. Uh, we do provide tools that that uh, do simplify the process, but still, it's great to have that uh, tech savvy in our teachers. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Nicholas. And Kristen over at Envision, how about you folks and looking for previous remote work experience and anything else that might help make someone stand out? So we don't um, necessarily require somebody to have worked from home before. Um, in my area of, of recruitment, um, we tend to see it common pop up pretty commonly because of um, the nature of sales. So those folks typically have been um, in a remote capacity before. I would tack on to what Josh and others have shared here that um, it's it's certainly helpful to know that you can be successful um, in whatever environment you you find yourself in when working from home. I, I think um, for me, it, it works because I um, have a social job by nature. So I'm talking to people all day and networking and I get to go to events and, and things like that. Um, but I think for others where we might see challenges um, in terms of like why it's important to know that you're capable of doing that, um, you know, work from home life, um, is in areas where you might have somebody who relies on the office environment for their social interaction or to engage with others. Um, we tend to see it be a little bit more challenging at times to extract 
um, or remove you know, an engineer or a designer and drop them into a fully remote environment um, because their job is very much um, you know, sort of a one-to-one -one thing and they're tacking on to, to projects, but um, you know, it's, it's helpful for them to have the, the environment around them to be engaged with. So we, you know, I think as, as this company itself, um, Envision, um, is looking at you know the sum total of you know who's applying and who we're attracting. Um, it's something we're always thinking about and talking about. How can we make somebody who's working remotely feel you know super involved? Um, I think it's nice to note on your resume that you have successfully done it before, or even just talking about it in your um, interview process. We spend a lot of time sharing you know sort of our remote life and fun stories that have happened, um, you know, with all of our dogs and children and spouses have made appearances and meetings and things like that. But, um, you know, I think just knowing, again, knowing that you're able to uh, be successful in that environment, being able to talk about why you think that, the, you know, if, if you haven't done it before, being able to talk to the point of why you think it would be a great time for you to make that move into a, a work from home environment, um, all things to just think about. Um, but for us, it's not a deal maker or breaker. Um, it just is, we're looking for you know the best talent for each of these opportunities, um, and we'll find it anywhere, hopefully. Awesome, thank you, Kristen. And I think that's a that's a good place to wrap up our Q and A session. I know we're just a about a minute over the hour, but thank you all for hanging in there. Um, so first, I want to say thank you very much to our panel today: Josh Layton at Williams Sonoma, Stacy Hodge and Scott Robinson at Broadpath Healthcare Solutions. Nicholas Grandy at OutSchool, and Kristen Walsh at Envision. Thank you all so much for sharing such good information. We really packed a lot into this hour and um, getting a lot of thank yous from the audience as well that you guys can't see. So I'll pass those on to you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And it's been awesome. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, all right. Everyone. Thank you, guys. And the other thing that I want to do is to announce our winner of the Williams-Sonoma gift card. So I know we mentioned one lucky person would be walking away with a gift card today, or I guess not walking away with a gift card, but the knowledge that they will have a gift card uh, that will be sent to them in the mail <laughs> in the near future. So today's winner, I'm going to, your last name, I'm definitely going to say incorrectly, I'm sure, and I apologize ahead of time, but the winner is Eva or Ava, uh, E-V-A is the first name. So Ava. Uh, Rudinger or Reutinger or Reutinger <laughs> or Rudinger. But we do have your email address, Ava, so we will send you um, information on how to claim that Williams Sonoma gift card. Congratulations. And you are on the call today, we noticed, so that's great. Um, and thank you all very much. This has been such a great uh, event, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks to all the attendees and also to our panel. And best of luck with your job searches to all the attendees, and have a great rest of the day to everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, everyone. Take care.